like to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Joy Guillermo. Joy is an environmental health scientist and public health practitioner. She leads the WHO, WMO, the World Meteorological Organization Climate and Health Joint Office in Geneva, with a focus on enabling WMO and WHO to work together to accelerate the availability, access, and use of climate and weather information that can improve pu public health policy and practice. She plays a leading coordination role for the Health, Environment, and Climate Change Coalition between the UN Environment, WHO, and WMO. Please, welcome Join. Thank you, Montera, for that introduction. Uh, as she mentioned, yes, I have a joint appointment between the World Meteorological Organization and the World Health Organization, but I'm mostly gonna be speaking to you with my WHO hat, where I'm hosted by the Department of Public Health and the Environment. Um, so as many of you know, WHO is the specialized agency focused on providing global leadership in the field of health shaping research agendas, generating evidence, setting norms and standards like air quality guidelines, um, and providing technical support to its members, the ministries of health, and plays an important role in monitoring and measuring trends of global health uh, conditions. And so with regards to environmental health and global environmental change, WHO has for many decades been a thought leader in thinking about the social and environmental determinants of health and trying to both assess and address uh, the drivers and the pressures of these uh, health outcomes. And so, for example, uh, WHO issued its first assessment looking at the emerging health risk of climate change in 1996, 20 years ago. Some of our friends in the room were part of that effort. Um, and WHO really takes pride in its work to identify these emerging health threats. There have been recent works on looking at biodiversity loss uh, that have also been really important. So I hope that the work that WHO has been doing over the years has actually already lent a lot of traction and support to the planetary health community to be where it is today. Uh, so I just want to share my personal opinions of how I think that the planetary health community can synchronize uh, with the work of the WHO uh, in some strategic ways. So I think it's well recognized that WHO consistently and often quite loudly speaks about the health consequences of a degraded environment, showing the numbers that diseases can be presented, or sorry, that diseases can be prevented through healthier environments. Um, but for WHO to be able to do this and advocate for better policies, we need strong evidence that we can stand behind. So the Global Burden of Disease reports that many of you are familiar with are a really important instrument that WHO uses to be able to do that kind of policy advocacy. The recent uh, report, uh, Preventing Disease Through Healthy Environments in 2016, showed that one in four global deaths are due to living and working in unhealthy environments. That three million deaths a year are attributable to poor ambient air quality, 2.5 million to indoor air quality. We heard this morning 92% of this environmental burden of disease occurs in developing countries. These are the statistics that get WA excited and promote taking action. But for us to be able to do that, we need an active research community who's also able to dissect and explain how the environment is driving these health conditions. And so the first synergy is I think WHO really needs this community to continue doing what you're doing right now, building momentum and continuing the investigations, continuing to build the evidence of how the environment is driving envi uh, health outcomes. Very importantly, training new cadres of health professionals who are able to both discuss this and negotiate um, how to find better solutions. There's a discussion at WHO right now questioning, do we have the right uh, public health professionals to be able to navigate the complex environmental health community right now. And then the second synergies are about making sure that your research is policy relevant. And 
I'm going to run out of time, but there are three key areas that I think this community can particularly pay attention to that are the mechanisms WHO uses to translate uh, research into policy. And the first are the interministerial processes for health and the environment. In Africa, in Asia, in Europe, there are processes bringing together ministers of health and ministers of environment, where they sit at the same table and discuss the issues of concern and negotiate policies that are both good for health and good for the environment. And I encourage you to look at how is your research feeding into those priorities and the decisions that those policymakers are focused on through those uh, processes. The second are the partnerships that WHO engages in, like the one that I run with the World Meteorological Organization, the partnership with the Convention on Biodiversity, the partnership with the Clean Air uh, and Climate Change Coalition, the initiative uh, mentioned in my introduction that I work on with Fanny, uh, bringing UNEP, WMO, and WHO together. These are policy, these are processes that this research community can engage with, and they're processes that are publishing reports and agendas highlighting the questions that need to be answered. So I encourage you to look into those, as well as the tools, the trainings that WHO is offering and look at how to improve those. We need innovation, we need improvements. Uh, we offer tools and guidelines that we think are going to help policymakers and practitioners build these practical connections and how do you address the environmental health risks. Um, but there's a lot of room for collaboration uh, with the planetary health community to, uh, to bring this research and knowledge into policy and practice. So thank you very much. Joy, thank you for your work leading the work of very big global institutions to connect technically data um, to understand better and address better solutions um, that have an integrated environmental change, human health focus.